Hello, um, we are the Mobile User Authentication with Deep Learning Group, and we'll be presenting on the results of our projects, uh, project, and this, these are our members. So we have five of them. So the project overview. The overall objective of our project is to achieve user authentication by analyzing Wi-Fi channel state information, which is also called as the CSI data. So the CSI data is gathered from the signal sent between the Wi-Fi receivers and the transmitters. And this signal is susceptible to all the things that are in its environment for like by saying like furniture or a person moving around in the room. So by using CSI data, we can theoretically achieve device free authentication, device free as in we don't need fingerprint readers or retinal scanners or any sort of a biometric scan. The system would be able to detect and identify you based off the disruptions that you cause in the Wi-Fi signal area. So with this CSI data as input, we are aiming to develop a machine learning model, uh, which is capable of authenticating on its own and identifying a specific individual. So since we were unable to meet uh, in person and collect data, uh, we used the data that the lab had previously gathered. Uh, with that, uh, there are three basic goals that we had to meet. The first was to segment the CSI data into activities. The activities may include walking, squatting, or, or just standing or running around. And uh, then we generate the time and frequency domain plots. Uh, for the frequency domain plots, we use a spectrogram. And then we create the model. And for the model, we feed the time and frequency domain plots as inputs. Um, the model is trained such that it is able to learn from these plots and classify activities and users based on the input given. So for our first step in our procedure, we first need to segment the data. So our input would be the CSI measurements as the DT has uh, outlined, and we'll be taking that in Wi-Fi signals of users conducting activities. However, we only want to extract the part on where that user is actually performing the activity so we can feed that into our deep learning model. And from past experiments, we know that variation in data signifies human activity. So what we do is we employ a uh, rolling variance and we use that to detect the start and end time of activities, which means that we take uh, we take a look at the specific chunks in our unsegmented raw data and we measure how spread out the data is and we find out which chunk has the most variance and we use that as our focal point for a two second time window. So as you can see in the bottom over here, we have our unsegmented raw data and the computer went through and saw in that black chunk in that black rectangle, there's the most variance and we use that as our two second time window. Okay, next slide. And here are just a couple examples of some uh, user segmentations of three users of three activities. And what I have bracketed off are just some trends that the computer might notice, such as for user three, it might notice that there's a, a sudden peak in the beginning, or such as for squatting, there's a lot of abnormal fluctuations at the end of our two second time window. So the general takeaway from this slide is that different users and different activities can produce different patterns for CNN to identify. Moving on to the frequency domain. So as stated earlier, the, gate, the data is gathered through antennas and subcarriers, which allows for easy uh, segmentation. And the data is also different for each activity and user, again, for separation. So the, the frequency domains are displayed through spectrograms and heat map format. So for example, uh, we have the image shown, which is a spectrogram of user one doing squatting. Uh, and the data is gathered from antenna one subcarrier one. So while they may be hard to differentiate to us, they are still different enough to be a significant source for our machine learning model as a counterpart to the time domain inputs. So the first application of these spectrograms is differentiating between user actions. So as seen in the two images below, you can see the difference between user one squatting versus user one sitting. 
So the difference is subtle, but you can see that the left part of the squatting spectrogram is notably different as there are more high range frequencies in the beginning of the squatting spectrogram than the sitting spectrogram. Uh, more importantly, the spectrograms can help us differentiate between people, which is key to the idea of mobile user authentication. And this ultimately allows the spectrograms to be used as input or training for our deep learning model. And here again, the images below show the difference between user one sitting versus user two sitting. And the difference is the concentration of higher energy frequencies. And we can see that there are more high range frequencies in user two than user one. All right, so I'll go over the process of designing the deep learning model. Uh, as Emily and David previously stated, this model uses both the time plots and spectrograms as input. And that's because uh, with the spectrograms, we have a uh, more depth of information that's not apparent with just the standard time plots. And we chose to use a convolutional neural network or CNN, which have been proven to be very effective at learning image data using a process called convolution. And a convolution, convolution is essentially when the model converts an image into a matrix, and it repeatedly simplifies the matrix into its most important features. So at the beginning, the model will learn features like there's an edge in this image or there's a curve here. And as you develop it more and more, it'll be able to pick up on, on more complex features such as uh, faces, nose, noses, eyes. Um, and in this case, we're applying it to our spectrogram and time data. So this is the final model architecture that we used. On the right, you can see the model has basically two branches, which accepts the time and spectrogram uh, plots. And each image is fed through three convolution layers, which is that process I just explained. And we use batch norm, dropout, and L1 regularization layers to aggressively standardize the weights of the model. Uh, this prevents something called overfitting, which is basically when the model sees uh, when it's trained on the same data too much, it begins to memorize the data and it's not able to be applied to new predictions. So for the scope of our project, the model is fed CSI data from five different users, which were conducting three different activities, sitting, squatting, and walking. And overall, we achieved 70% activity recognition recognition and 60% user recognition. Obviously, uh, this user recognition is not satisfactory for practical use. You know, you don't want a 40% chance of a stranger unlocking your phone. Uh, however, the fact that we're able to achieve 60% user recognition shows that the model is learning uh, something significant. So if we have five users, if the model was just guessing at their identity randomly, we would cap out around 20% accuracy. So uh, while we were unable to achieve a practical authentication accuracy, it is a proof of concept that this technique can be further refined. And hopefully we can come to a point where we have device-free authentication. This is our final poster with all the figures that we essentially just uh, explained and broke down. And we'd like to thank Professor Chen, Kang Shi, and Wenjin Zhang for their assistance and guidance through the project. So, Thanks so much for listening.